Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anton and I will lead today's webinar about bridging functionality of Smart PTT. In case if someone is unfamiliar with our software, I will tell you shortly about its general features. Smart PTT comes in two options. Smart PTT Basic is a solution for small local radio networks where control station is used to dispatch the system. Smart PTT Enterprise allows dispatch and control over complex Motorola Mototurbo networks such as IPSET Connect, Capacity Plus, Link Capacity Plus and Connect Plus. Dispatcher software gives opportunity to control and log the flow of data and voice in radio network, request location of subscribers and monitor the state of repeaters. Smart PTT connects to Mototurbo networks directly via IP, including Capacity Plus and Link Capacity Plus over MAI for both voice and data transmission. Capacity Plus networks can also be monitored and logged via IP connection without MAI, but in this case to have ability to send data into network and make calls, control stations are needed. Also, Smart PTT gives a set of software tools such as web client and file transfer software which increase radio network usability and functionality. Smart PTT has functionality that allows it to connect to PBX and gives subscribers the ability to use PBX interconnection from radio network as well. That's all general features of Smart PTT software. Let's talk more about bridging functionality. Bridging in radio networks is ability to connect networks and subscribers which are not connectable by other means. For example, to allow IPSET Connect subscribers to make calls into Capacity Plus network, or allow analog subscribers to talk freely with digital subscribers in Moto Turbo network. Smart PTT software has flexible and powerful bridging ability. It can be divided into two main parts, local bridging within radio server and bridging between different radio servers. Local bridging can be divided to static and dynamic. Static local bridging is the simplest method. You can specify needed routes between different systems, which will handle the calls within the system. Static route defines specifically what is the source, what is the destination, and what is the contact, contents. For example, calls from Capacity Plus system must be routed to control station if call is made to group 2. It is called static route for, for group 2 between Capacity Plus and Control Station. Static routes can be implemented for all calls, group calls, or private calls. Sources and destinations are defined by all available systems for specific radio server. Dynamic bridging is more flexible feature that uses radio server ARS data to organize bridge with source and destination not defined specifically. Dynamic bridging is possible for private calls and group calls. Private dynamic bridge will allow bridged user to make private calls for any available subscriber within bridged system, and for any subscriber to call bridged subscriber wherever he will be. When such call starts, radio server will find where in the system bridged subscriber had registered last time and organize call between found destination and source of call. For example, if recipients of call are present on sites 1, 3 and 4, then site 2 will be left unused and free for local operation, while sites 1, 3 and 4 will be used to organize a group call. To configure dynamic group bridging, you need to open Radio Server Configurator and look for Multigroups option. Here you must specify which subscribers are ought to listen for dynamic group call and which talk group ID will be used for such calls. In CPS of subscriber units, you will need to set corresponding talk group to be included on RX group list, as well as provide ability for this radio to call this specific group. As for group bridging, radio server will search all radios mentioned in this definition of dynamic group and will start transmission on every needed channel where recipients are situated, but will leave all the other system free for operation, thus making minimal needed resources to cover all group over the network. 
As for bridging between radio servers, there are also two options, IP side connect bridging and radio server tunnel. You can use ability of radio servers to be either masters or peers of IP side connect to your profit. Make one radio server master of IP side connect and make another one peer connected to this master. It will create a virtual IP side connect network between those two radio servers. Further, bridge any network from master of virtual to virtual IP side connect and make a bridge on peer from virtual IP side connect to any other network. Including ability to process bridged calls, radio servers will share information about calls on virtual IP side connect, thus making it possible to call from one radio server to another by means of IP side connect interface. The limitation for this method is that network connection between those two radio servers must have no more than 60 milliseconds ping time. Otherwise, sound will be too much delayed. It can cause some performance problems, up to no voice from one radio server to another. Another way of cross-radio server bridging is radio server tunnel. Where local bridging works within one radio server and rerouted calls to other subscribers in connected topologies, tunnel can increase bridge space dramatically by connecting another radio server to the same system. And when call originates in the first radio server, it will be tunneled via one bridge to another one. Tunnel is configured on each radio server pretty much the same as IP side connect configuration, but it eliminates those strict requirements for connection. Even satellite link is suitable for establishing a tunnel, but another limitation is only IP side connect networks on both can be bridged in this case. Further support of other network topologies is planned already. To configure bridging in Smart PTT, you need to enable bridging feature in radio server. This requires suitable license with bridging enabled. Bridges themselves are configured from dispatcher interface. Open context menu of radio server and select configure call bridging table option. Bridging configuration window will open. Bridging is organized in groups of routes. Groups of routes can be easily enabled or disabled here to allow fast configuration of bridge map via existing groups. Click Add Group button. New window will appear for group configuration. It lists all routes added to the group. Click Add Root button. Route configuration window will appear allowing you to select source, destination, direction and type of route. To configure a route, Select a source of route. Choose a destination from a list available. You can choose each available channel in the topology as source or destination. Finally, select type and direction of route. One-way routes will not allow backward calls to be processed, so source can call destination, but destination cannot call source. To decrease amount of routes and make bridge system more flexible, it's possible to process routed calls. In this case, you can eliminate a need to make an all-to-all -all bridge system and make calls go through one point which is set to process routed calls. When you need to configure cross-bridging, cross-radio server bridging, you will need to set up one radio server as master of the tunnel and specify an interface to be used to connect to it and configure all the others as peers and specify an IP address of master to connect to. After that, it will be possible to select other radio server in common bridging interface to make cross radio server bridges. This is all about bridging functionality of SmartPTT. Visit our website smartptt.com to find out more information about SmartPTT software. Check out our technical support portal on support.smartptt.com. You can submit your requests there and receive fast and professional help. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, user SmartPTT. If you have any questions, feel free to send email to us on info at smartptc.com 
or ask it on support portal. Thank you for your attention.